happened here? Mr. Marston, sir! Marston! It's me! Professor, what are you doing here? I thought you went back to Yale. Well, I did, but uh, I came back uh, for another round of research. <laughs> and now all hell is quite literally broken loose. What is going on? Well, well sir, I'm a man of science, a man of great learning, a, a thinker, a, a wise man. And I'll be honest with you, sir, I haven't got a fucking clue. Why well, ain't that dandy? What, what should we do? Well, I suggest we try to find other survivors, band together, and find a cure. Or fight to the death trying. Well, well, that sounds great and all, but, uh, but I'm uh, just peachy. But, but I'm not sure that I'm, I'm not cut out for such shenanigans. Uh, I was thinking more that uh, finding a horse and, and riding back to the civilized north at the speed of knots before writing a paper on the events from the comfort of my study. I'm a scientist, after all, right? I mean, I, I, I can't do much science if I'm some bloodshot dervish's lunch, can I? Much as I would like. Your sense of duty is very impressive, Professor. <laughs> I'm gonna search the back street for survivors. But, no, no, perhaps staying with you would be safer. Uh, could, could you just wait a sec here, would you please? I, I'm going to wander down that lonely, deserted street and get my bag. Wait, you should stay with me, Professor. You haven't got a gun. Oh, no, no, it's okay. There's no need to worry. Everyone's already dead. <laughs> I left my stuff with Mr. Nastas. You remember him, uh, Indian fellow, dumb as bricks, but, but a good sort. Okay. Well, meet me in a couple minutes. Affirmative. A couple of minutes. <sighs> Anyone here? Hello? Anyone here? In here, mister. Come out. It's okay. Come out. I don't bite. Bad joke. I mean, come out. Become a family, mister. And mine, I fear. I'm sorry. We were so glad to see my mama. Because she's been dead for three years from the smallpox. Your mama was dead? I saw her walk up onto the porch. And then boom! She ate my daddy. You weren't. You weren't a bad man, mister. You weren't. Sure. He liked to drink, but, but he weren't bad. And sure, he liked the company of women, but he weren't bad, mister, he weren't. No one deserves to have their blood drunk. I mean, he knew how to use his fist. And if, if a woman spoke out her place, he reminded her of it and everything. And when my mama was dying, people said that he was lying with her sister, but that weren't true, mister, it weren't. But you said your mother was dead. Her and Mr. Braithwaite, he's been dead a year. And then yesterday, he walked up that street eating dogs. And he loves animals. All the dead folk have come back to life, mister. Only they ain't happy. 
It's a funny kind of salvation. All the dead folk? All the folk buried at the cemetery over by the churchyard. My God. I want to go have a look. You want to come? I already seen my mama. I don't need to see any more of my relatives. Here, mister. Take this. If you can burn them, maybe you can put their souls to rest. I, uh, mister! If you see my uncle Mordecai, you burn him. Burn him real good, you hear?
Folks okay? Oh, just fantastic. I just saw my daughter get eaten by some creature sent straight from hell. Thanks for asking. I'm kind of sorry I did. Sorry, mister. Forgive my wife. We've suffered terribly. What's going on? Well, it's the government's fault. Ain't it always? Well, they let in too many foreigners. Just shut the goddamn border or things like this happen. My daughter was just some satanic demon's lunch because of the goddamn government. And I pay my taxes, like usually. I think we may be moving a little off topic here. I ain't a wise man, but I have done a little traveling. These creatures ain't like any foreigners I've ever seen. Well, thanks for the input, cowpoke. Oh, I got flesh-eating monsters feasting on my family, and I'm taking advice about tolerance from a gunslinger. Oh, what in the world has my life come to? And my daddy told me I never should have gotten married. This is all your fault, you, you useless man. Oh, not now, Doreen. Not this again. Your daddy was a, a bully and a drunk. Well, you ain't no kind of man. Listen, <laughs> I'm sorry to interrupt your happy reminiscences. Is there anything I can do to help? Have you got any idea of how we can survive? Well, you could try shooting them creatures, you dumb fool. Ma'am, it's been a real pleasure. Sir, you're a man of great patience. See? That feller ain't hiding away like a little girl who's wet herself. I thought we agreed we should stick together. <laughs> so we're just gonna stay up here till we either starve or have to eat each other? What do you want me to do? I ain't God. <laughs> that surely you ain't. Oh, you're as useless as a four-car flush. You one of them, mister? Do I look like one of them? Well, don't come no closer. We made that mistake before we lost half our number. I ain't one of them, you fool. Well, how do I know? They can't speak. Well, I ain't taking no chances. Kill him, he's one of them! Yeah. No, I ain't. Don't take no chances, Silas. Have it your way, all right? Listen. I ain't coming no closer. Do you know what's going on? It's the glass eye. The freak with a glass eye, he caused this. No, 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 it's the snake oil man. These poor folks have been drugged. I blame the Mexicans. They haven't been struck down. All right, we heard a lot of stories, mister. Some say it's a moon, some say it's drugs. Hey, don't come no closer now, stand back. Apparently it's worse in New Austin. Must be where it came from. And it looks like I'm headed down to New Austin. Did one of you say snake oil? It's the glass eye. I 
I blame the Mexicans. Oh, Connie McTavish, you don't know nothing. You always was an ignorant shrew. I bet your husband's glad he's dead. <gasps> well, at least my husband never took favors from the stargazers, Lucille Billingsgate. You say you're sorry, you hillbilly white trash! Yeah, yeah, now how are we gonna rebuild America like this? Now, see, I thought we had it all decided. We was gonna be kind and gentle and pay homage to our leader, who happens to be me. Sounds like you folks have this all worked out. Have yourself a fine America, and good luck. We never had that decided. We decided we would hold elections and that I would be leader. You can't even read. Well, I, I got gravity. Well, I mean, gravy. I mean, uh, folk respect me. I am the new king, Archibald Andrews. Me. Now pay him. <laughs> Sometimes I think I've been drugged. 